Okay, let's go for a little exploring. I thought over here, since I was in the area, I might be able to get some better mountain shots. And maybe I'll see something interesting. I heard those supposed to be a little, I guess, what, do you, what would you call it? A little hidden Easter egg, if that's what you want to call it. I read about a new drone today. At first it looked kind of interesting. It reminded me of the that Snap drone, if you guys remember, in terms of the shape of it. But it says this one is the Skydio R1. And apparently, I guess the main feature of this to make it stand out of everything else is it can fly autonomously, basically avoid obstacles and everything like that. You might think obstacle avoidance, you've heard that all the time, right? Well, apparently this one, it's really sophisticated. It reminds me just by looking at the videos, at least the ones that they show in their marketing material, it seems like it's more something along the lines of what you'd see in what smart cars, like autonomous cars would actually have to avoid obstacles and all that. So this one's actually really sophisticated. So it makes it stand out in that way. They are more focused on the autonomous flight and to make their point they in their video, they have these parkour people it seems like going through for example like a forest and having this drone follow it. And for the most part it looks like it's really accurate. How exactly do you control it? According to this it says it uses the app on your smartphone. Launching the R1 is as simple as swiping up. As soon as it's in the air, R1 begins avoiding obstacles on its own, even through challenging environments like a forested trail. At that point, R1 is flying itself. No need to fuss with complicated flight controls. When it's following you, R1 uses advanced vision system to track you through 3D space. So I believe from this, there's no actual physical controller even as an add-on, unless I'm mistaken. It's basically intended for people to throw it up there and have it follow you. Which is kind of a good idea because even for me, my, my visions for things like the drones and the perspective was if I go hiking, it'd be nice to be able to capture stuff with a main camera and have the drone follow me like as I'm going through it. I think that would actually be cool. But battery life is obviously an issue. It says for here, it can fly for about 16 minutes. So with that idea, it doesn't matter what drone it is currently, there isn't enough drones that have a big battery power that's consumer oriented, I guess you can say. And another cool thing about the video is I noticed they actually have a capture of the drone following the subject as well, giving you that third person view. Because normally people, the way they do that, I guess companies is, they fly the drone to follow the subject, use that video afterwards, and then they do say a DSLR to capture everything else. But in this case, they actually showed a behind the scene video, like a raw video apparently, and it shows that their drone's actually following their drone. I've actually had a lot of issues with that, even trying to follow other drones, like even mine. So that's actually really impressive in terms of its ability to go through obstacles and follow objects. According to the specs, this thing has like almost, what is this, 13 cameras? That would make sense for the obstacle avoidance. And usually for a lot of people, they wonder because, you know, there's things like regulations, like can you fly this thing? What is the weight? According to this, it's 2.2 pounds. So here in Canada, for example, that kind of falls into the same category as things like the Phantoms and all that in terms of weight. So you'd have less places to be able to fly it with relative ease, I guess you can say. Sounds interesting and everything like that. So for a person like me, how much does the cost? I was looking at it, it's like 2,499, holy cow. Are they targeting a person like me or someone else? Because within that price range, it'd be more towards things like people who fly and inspire, right? And that was actually the interesting thing because I was just reading an article about it where they had an interview with, I guess, people in the company. And they were saying here, because they recognize people like DJI are the leaders, it says, the Skydio is confident that no product, not even DJI Inspire 2, can compete in autonomy with the R1. And it says, their goal is not to compete with high-end DJI drone, but to bring the level of autonomy the R1 delivers to a cheaper, more mainstream consumer product, much like how DJI has made traditional, manually controlled drones more accessible with devices like the Spark and the Mavic Air. That is actually a little confusing there because the price range, I would assume the price range is way out of reach for most people at this price anyways. Although they say here, they think it'll always be marketed towards UAV junkies and the type of consumers and professionals who enjoy piloting aircrafts as well. It makes me wonder, would people who actually prefer flying them be interested in something like this? As further clarification to the, I guess, the audience, it says this product is less about the experience of manually flying it and how much more about the content that you can create. There are always going to be people who enjoy flying, which is great, Bry says, but our bet is that there are a lot of people who are excited about what a drone can do, but who are more excited about what it can do for them. 
that's actually a more a person like me. Like I fly a drone to capture things like scenery because for things like, again, going on trips, it gives me the perspective that you can't normally get as opposed to just plain flying it in general. But at that price point, it makes me wonder, are they actually targeting like a person like me? Because that's really out of reach. 2,400 just for the drone compared to other things that you can get within, I guess, that size of convenience, if that's, right, if that's the right way to say it. I'd definitely be interested in it, something like that. It's just the price point is a little high. Plus, in terms of things like the weight, maybe it wouldn't be as good just because of things like regulations. It's not really anything to do with them, but you wouldn't be able to fly it in as many places in general. So that's kind of a challenge, but it piques my interest. Too bad I don't get to try it or something like that, just to show what, it, what it's like, like in general, for like an average person going through places like this. Okay, where the heck am I going here? Lots of boats and stuff as usual. Almost looks like a hidden trail or something like that. I actually think that's it. As I said, there was supposed to be like a hidden thing here. I guess this is it, but they don't want people to climb it, I guess? It was supposed to be like a hidden tree house here where people can climb up and get their views around here. I'm guessing with that, people went up there anyways. Another reason to have the drone usually, so I don't have to do crazy things like that to get views. Okay, wonder if I can take off anywhere here. Oh, guess what guys? I can't believe I forgot to put the SD card in there when I took it out yesterday. Darn it! Well, at least I know where it is now, so that's kind of neat. I think I can grab an SD card on my way back and maybe just get some default practice in and maybe get some stuff too. You know, I actually have a spare one too. Maybe I should just throw that into the drone bag. I just don't put it there because it's 32 gigabytes usually. I figured, where am I going to use that? So today I went for this one called the Abundant Asai. I actually never tried the berry, even though people keep talking about it for health and stuff like that. I don't know, is it all hype or is there any truth to it? Wow, that is strong. What's that taste? Holy, holy smokes, what's in this thing? <laughs> Let me read the ingredients again afterwards. I mean, it tastes okay, it's just the, the shock, I guess. I, I guess I'm not used to drinking stuff like this with berries and all that. What the heck is in this? Mangoes, blueberries, organic acai berries, cranberry juice, and banana. Okay, that explains it with the cranberry and stuff like that, but that's pretty strong. Woo! Okay, I guess if you really like strong berry flavors, this is for you. <laughs> I'm used to drinking, like when it comes to raw juice, like just raw vegetables and stuff like that, not like a super sweet or sour kind of taste to it. This one's like a kick. Okay, darn little thing. I'm gonna get some, I guess, something quick in. The light's almost all gone. I'm thinking maybe because of all that talk about the drone and autonomous mode, maybe I'll try some of the autonomous mode to see how well it filmed because I'm used to doing everything manually usually. It's kind of funny. It says subject lost and then afterwards it recorded my foot as the subject with a leg. So that's where I can see basically the other drone would become useful. This one's still not there yet. It needs more sensors.
Well, that was kind of cool. Got to let the public just try it as well. Got to capture the dog and so forth too. It's kind of funny. All right, see you guys later.